Hi friends, I'm Arpita Karwa. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most asked topics in the UGC NET English paper. And which is that? It is triology. Since the history of UGC NET, questions on triologies have been constant. And hence, in this video, I have brought for you a comprehensive list of triologies. And not just that, keeping in view that a lot of chronological questions are asked these days, I have created mnemonics to help you remember the sequence of each and every triology. Excited, right? Let's dive into it. But before that, let's understand the meaning and history of triology. So first of all, let us understand the meaning of triology. A triology consists of three distinct works with either connections seen as either a single work or three individual ones. Now, now, triology is traced back to ancient Greece, particularly in the Dionysia festivals, where a set of three plays were performed alongside a fourth satire play. So, that was way back in Greece. Now, do you know which was the first triology? Think about it. The correct answer is Orestia. Now, Orestia was first performed in Athens in 458 BC which remains the sole surviving ancient Greek triology. It is also claimed to be the first triology. Who was uh, the writer? It was written by Echolus, an ancient Greek playwright and one of the earliest uh, tra 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 tragic writer of ancient Greece. Now, he is referred to as the father of tragedy for his significant contribution to the development of Greek drama. Now, did you know that Echolus introduced a second actor to the Greek play. So, this is another interesting fact. Now, this triology that we are going to talk about consists of three works, Egmenon, Kefero, and Eudemes. Now, trick to remember the sequences to remember the word ace. A-C-E stands for the three works. So, you remember the title. Okay, now let's look at the short summary of each of these plays. The first one is Egmenon. Now, this deals with the story of Egmenon who comes to Argos after the Trojan War and his murder happens by his wife, Clytemetra. Now, the second work is Cleophoro or the Liberation Bureau and this is the story of vengeance of Orestes and Electra, son and daughter respectively of Egmenon, who murder their mother, Clymestra, and the lover, Aegisthus. Now, a question from this text was asked in UGC Net 2021, so do remember it. The third work is Eumendes. Now, this tells the story of a trial of Orestes by Athena, who is goddess of wisdom. In the end, she sets Orestes free. A question based on this triology was asked again in June 2023 exam, and the question is right in front of you. So, you can understand by looking at the question that how important it is to know the names of these triology uh, and the plays that are a part of this triology. So, ensure that you write it down somewhere in your notes. Also, pardon me for pronunciation because these are Greek text and there are various pronunciations available for these texts. So, I am just using the British pronunciation. There might be multiple other pronunciations. So, you might feel as if the pronunciation is not appropriate. So, pardon me for that. Okay, so now move on to the second work. The next one in line is Theban plays or the Oedipus cycle. Now, this triology was written by Sophocles in the 5th century BC. Now, it deviates from the true triology concept as the plays were written separately and with different themes with a uh, different purpose. So, this triology includes three plays. Now, the first one is one of my personal favorites, which is Oedipus Rex or Oedipus the King. Now, this first play revolves around King Oedipus of Thebes who seeks to solve the city's plague by discovering the murder of the former king Laius. Now, as Oedipus investigates, he unwittingly reveals a tragic prophecy that he will kill his father and marry his mother. Now, the play unfolds with Oedipus gradually realizing the horrifying truth about his own identity and his own actions. The second one is Oedipus at Colonus. Now, this second play follows the now blinded and disgraced Oedipus as he seeks refuge in a sacred groove at Polonus. Now, his daughters are Antigone and Ismene. Uh, now, they play the prominent roles as Oedipus faces the consequences of his own earlier actions. Now, the play explores the themes of redemption, family ties and divine justice. 
The third one is Antigone. Now, although this is not a direct continuation, Antigone is often considered part of this Oedipus cycle. It focuses on Oedipus' daughter Antigone who defies the king's decree to leave her brother unburied after a failed rebellion. The play delves into the themes of morality, duty and clash between individual and state authority. Now, together, these plays form a tragic narrative exploring the complexity of fate, free will and consequences of one's action in the context of Greek mythology and the ancient Greek society. So that was all about um, this particular play. Now, the best way to remember these three titles are to remember this line. King and clown are gone. Now, your king is for Oedipus the king, clown for Colonus, and gone is for Antigone. So, if you remember this line, king and clowns are gone, you will remember the three works. Okay. Now, before we move on to the next point, here is something that I want to share. If you're preparing for UGC Net Paper 1 or Paper 2 MA inference, PhD entrance, English literature exams like PGT, PGT, UPSC, GATE, SET, so, please, uh, there is a great news for you and I would really request you to go and visit our website where you will find detailed online video course for all these exams. In all our video courses, we provide you with topic-wise video lectures with rich animations covering all topics in a step-by-step -step manner which works even when you've not done any previous preparation. We also uh, provide you with high-quality PDF and revision notes that cover syllabus-wise topics comprehensively and ensure you qualify your dream exam in just one attempt. Along with video lectures and PDFs, we also offer test series that consist of more than 3,000 unit-wise questions that comes with detailed explanation. Plus, after every test, you get a detailed performance report and your ranking in the All India Leaderboard. All the details are available on the website. You can even call or WhatsApp on the number displayed on the screen and my team will be more than happy to assist you. So with that note, let us move on with the video and talk about the third important trilogy. The next one is the Young England Trilogy. Now, it was written by Benjamin Disraeli. Now, it consists of three novels that reflect the author's political and social views during the early Victorian era. Now, here is a brief summary of each of the three novels so that you don't miss out on any important information. So the first one is Cunningsby or the new generation. Now, the first novel follows the life of Harry Cunningsby, an orphaned young man, as he navigates the political and societal landscape of early 19th century. The narrative explores themes of political reform, social inequality and clash between the traditional aristocracy and the rising industrial and financial classes. So, that was the first novel. Second is Sybil or the two nations. Now, this second installment, Sybil, focuses on the stark contrast between the two nations. Now, what are these two nations? The first one is the wealthy aristocracy and the second one is the impoverished working class. So, this novel addresses issues of social justice, workers' rights and need for political reform. The character of Sybil represents the plight of the working class and the narrative underscores the importance of understanding and addressing societal disparities, very similar to what we see with Charles Dickens' novel. The third one is Tancred or the New Crusade. Now, this is the final novel, the concluding uh, novel of the trilogy. This takes a completely different turn by incorporating elements of exotism and orientalism. The novel follows the journey of Tancred, a young Englishman, as he travels to the Middle East in search of spiritual and political enlightenment. The narrative explores themes of cultural identity and religious exploration and the intersection of Western and Eastern civilization. So, this entire trilogy collectively represents Benjamin Desrailly's vision for a revitalized, socially harmonious England, addressing the challenges of his time through a blend of political commentary and as well as a fictional storytelling. So, very, very beautiful. I've personally read it and I've loved it. The best way to remember the names of these three works are, if you remember, Cunning Generation, Civil Nation and Trank, uh, Tancred Crusade. So, if you remember these three words, you will remember the entire novel. Okay, a trilogy. Now, let's move on to the next one, which is the New York Trilogy. It is written by Paul Auster. 
Now, it is a series of three interrelated detective stories. The first one is City of Glass. Second is Ghosts. And the third is The Logged Room. Okay. Now, let us look at the story or the plot of each of them. So, City of Glass ki baat kare, to the story revolves around a writer named Daniel Quinn, who after receiving a mysterious phone call meant for a real detective, takes on the role himself. So, this decision leads him into a complex and surreal investigation that blurs the line between reality and that of fiction. The second one is Ghosts. Okay, you might remember Henry Ibsen because he had written this work with same title. Now, this installment introduces private detective Blue, who is hired to follow a man named Black. As Blue delves into the case, he becomes entangled in a web of identity and intrigue, covering, uncovering the secrets that challenges his own understanding of what reality is. So, very, very complicated work. The third one is Log the Room. Now, in this final part, there's an anonymous writer. Now, this writer is being given the task of completing the works of his vanished friend. As he immerses himself in his friend's writing and life, he finds that fiction and reality becomes increasingly difficult to separate, leading to a captivating exploration of identity and storytelling. Now, how do you remember the names of these three works? If you can just remember this. In the City of Glass, they keep ghosts in a locked room. So, if you remember these three, you will good to you are good to go. Now we move on to the fifth work, which is Wesker Triology. It was written by the American uh, playwright Arnold Wesker. It is another important triology which has been asked quite a few times in the previous exam. Now this triology is composed of following works. Okay, the first one is Chicken Soup with Barley. Second is Roots, and third is I am talking about Jerusalem. Jerusalem, uh, I'm sure you know, is a very famous city associated with Christianity. Now, this first work, Kitchen Soup with Barley, is uh, revolving around a family in London's East End and spans several decades capturing the impact of political and social changes on their lives. It particularly focuses on the character of Sarah. Now, ex this novel explores her political awakening and her disintegration of her family. Then we have Roots, which is the second play. This novel continues the saga of the family, delving into the lives of younger generation. It examines their struggles with identity, relationship and legacy of the family's socialist ideas, Okay, which is set against the backdrop of this changing uh, European society. And the third one is I'm talking about Jerusalem, where uh, it is also known as the Friends. Okay, now this is... a uh, Triology, which focuses on characters in 1970s, exploring the efforts and purpose to find meaning that has shifted in this entire world. So this entire Wesker Triology is celebrated for its portrayal of working class life, especially, um, and the examination of political ideologies and the rich character development across the three interconnected plays. Now, how do you remember the three works in the Wesker Triology? Just remember this. Arnold was shocked to find roots in the chicken soup when he was in Jerusalem. So if you can just remember this, you'll be good to go. Last is the Empire Triology. Now, this is a very famous triology written by J.G. Farrell. Now, it consists of three historical novels set in the British Empire, specifically during the British Raj in India. Now, what are these three novels? The first one is Troubles, which is set in Ireland in the aftermath of World War I, and the story follows an Englishman named Pendrin uh, Archer, who visits a hotel and becomes entangled in the complexity of the Irish politics and societal upheaval. Now, the second work is Seas of Krishnapur. Now, this novel is set during the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Now, British residents in the fictional town of Krishnapur faces a siege by Indian rebels, and the story explores the impact of colonialism and clash of cultures, something similar to what we see in Passage to India. Last is the Singapore Grip. Now, the final novel is set in Singapore, as the title suggests, just before the Japanese invasion during the World War II. It follows the lives of various characters during a British rubber plantation owner against the backdrop of the war and the decline of British Empire. So this entire Empire Triology 
which is written by J. G. Farrell, is acclaimed for its satirical and uh, insightful portrayal of British Empire and its unraveling in different regions and historical periods. Now, here are a few things that you should definitely remember. Seas of Krishnapur received 1973 Booker Prize. In 2010, Troubles was uh, retrospectively awarded the Lost Man Booker Prize created to recognize works published in 1970. Now, how do you remember these three works? Just remember, Troubles led to Seas in Krishnapur and Grip on Singapore. So, if you remember this slide, you'll be good to go. Okay, now this brings us to the end of the video. I hope you liked the video and the mnemonics that I designed for you to remember the sequence. Let me know in the comment section how would you design your own mnemonics to memorize the trilogies. I would be really interested to know how creative you can get. So with that note, I would like to take your leave. If you found this video helpful, then please do like this video by giving it a big fan thumbs up and also share it with other net aspirants. Uh, that's it from my side for this video lecture. I'll meet you very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarwar.com.